Free agency has once again taken its toll on the Dallas Cowboys fan base, and I'm here to talk about it with you all. Why the Cowboys didn't make a single move on day one of free agency, what that means for 2024, and one disturbing report that came out last night that should have every fan of this team in shambles. By the way, Dallas did just re-sign their long snapper a couple of minutes ago on day two of free agency, but oh well, let's get into the video. Thirty-one teams made moves on the first day of free agency. Thirty-one teams signed or re-signed a player. One team did not. And you guessed it, the one team that didn't was the Philadelphia... I'm just kidding. It was the Cowboys. They didn't make a single move. Not one. And I have a serious question. What were they doing? Are they really on a yacht in the Bahamas because they hate free agency that much? They hate improving their team and paying guys that much. We didn't hear a peep from them the entire first wave. The Eagles made a huge move to sign Saquon Barkley, someone that I talked about the Cowboys potentially signing. The Commanders signed two starting caliber players from the Cowboys in Tyler Biotish and Dorrance Armstrong, while the Cowboys did nothing. And the Cowboys just sat there while they lost three contributors from 2023. And I get it, if Dallas doesn't want to fork out $15 million per year for a running back like Saquon, I wouldn't have either. I wouldn't have paid Pollard the $8 million. I wouldn't have paid Biotish or Dorrance Armstrong the contracts that they got on the open market. But that's not even where we're at with this front office. We're in a much worse spot than just not wanting to overpay for average contributors. And I know that because of this report that came out last night as the first free agency day came to an end. The report reads, Cowboys were in the mix today for running back Zach Moss, a person familiar with the discussion said. Ultimately, the price extended past their comfort point. Moss agreed with the Bengals on a two-year $8 million contract that includes $4.5 million in earnings this year. I'm going to sit here for a second and let that sink in. The Cowboys thought that a running back at $4 million per year over two years was too much money and it was past their comfort zone. $4 million is past your comfort zone? At a position that I would argue is the biggest question mark surrounding this team in terms of having a legitimate starter, and they passed on it. That is scary stuff when it comes to this team improving at all during this free agency period because you're probably not getting a starting caliber player at any position for less than four million dollars at this point it's not about winning the negotiation it's about improving your team and the cowboys seem set on not doing that in free agency now i think there are going to be guys that are in that price range of the cowboys and their comfort zone but you're not going to like the names so with what the cowboys have done recently what does all of this mean for the 2024 season? And when I say 2024 season, yes, I am including what they need to do in the draft in April. This team has holes to fill on the roster, more than they did going into the 2023 season. Most notably at running back, left guard or left tackle, center and linebacker. All of those spots except for maybe linebacker will need a rookie draft pick to be a starter and be a good starter at that. And this is the exact reason why everyone is pounding the table for this team to be somewhat active during this period. You can't go into the draft with this many glaring needs. You're gonna end up picking for position rather than taking the best player available. It's so painfully obvious that the Cowboys are betting on taking an offensive lineman in round one, whether that be a center, guard, or tackle. It's pretty obvious that they'll be looking for a running back and linebacker in rounds two and three. And what really sucks is this is not a top tier running back class, and it's not a top tier linebacker class either. You're probably not finding a year one impact player in the second and third rounds at those positions. Highly, highly unlikely. So in rounds one, two, and three, that's the Cowboys' only picks inside the top 165. So if you're gonna go into the draft needing those positions, potentially reaching because you need them, it's gonna be really hard to hit. Let me know what you guys think about this Cowboys free agency so far. I wanna hear everyone's thoughts about what the front office is doing right now. Comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I love you all, and I'll see you guys when the Cowboys maybe make a move.